in today's video i'm going to be doing an indoor portrait but at the end or the final result is going to look like it was captured outdoors and so with this in mind there are a few things that i want you to bear in mind i am going to be using hard lights i'm going to be using hard lights throughout and the reason why I'm choosing to use hard lights or unmodified lights is because I want the image to look like we captured it um, on a whim. You know, maybe we were, you know, outside, it was pitch black and maybe I even used, a, you know, my phone flashlight or an actual flashlight or maybe there was a lamp, like a street lamp or something and then we just had it standing under it, you know, to capture this portrait. And I also wanted it to look like maybe we did have a bit of, you know, like a moonlight in the scene or something behind here that was also illuminating the scene. And so for my lighting decisions, what I decided to do was to have an edge light, which is of a lower power than my main light. And I just balanced them out till I figured the power ratio that was actually going to help me capture the image and the mood that I wanted. Now, before we proceed, I also did an analytics check and I realized that over 50% of you who watch the videos have not subscribed. So please, please do well to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos and also just to show that you're supporting the channel it's free for you to do so and it takes nothing but under a second for you to hit that subscribe button so just go ahead and hit subscribe all right so moving on um just like how i would always do my portrait shoots in the studio i'm always starting with a weaker light you know balancing it or you know triggering it you know adjusting my camera settings and trying to figure out the settings that i actually want to stick to and then now adjusting the power ratio of the light until it hits exactly where i want it to and then also determine the direction of where i want that edge light to come from so again i'll I'll always be saying this over and over again that if you're doing a studio shoot and you're using more than one light and they're all going to be coming from different sources I would always suggest that you start with a weaker light and then build off from that so you start with a weaker light figure out its power ratio its position and how it's affecting the shot and then now you can move on so after I figured that out the next thing I did was to turn on my main strobe and that is the Explore 600 and I also had that way high up again like I said because maybe it was a street light that was illuminating here we don't know but I just wanted it to come from high up so that we can have this elongated dramatic shadow so, so in this case it's very intentional um, where the shadow is falling the length of the shadow and why I had the light that high I'm always saying that you know sometimes it's not really flattering if you have you know those long shadows because it just creates a lot of a dramatic effect in your shot but in this case it's something that I think did complement the final result and i'm happy that i did have the light that high to begin with so now that we have established our lighting ratios and the positioning and the height dynamics the next thing i also wanted to do was to add in a reflector and the reason why i decided to do that is because i noticed that with the lights being so high we're losing the catch lights in her eyes and this is something i'm always talking about as well on the channel that always try and at least get some catch lights in your subject's eyes because it, it makes them look alive it just brings them to life freshens up their face and it's something i'm always looking for or I'm always trying to add to my shots as much as possible you might not think it's important but when you start noticing how much of a difference catch lights makes in your portraits trust me you would always want to find um, catch lights or something that's just going to add a bit of a twinkle or sparkle in your subject's eye so this shoot is pretty pretty simple all you need is a very dark or black background in this case that is exactly what I'm using a pitch black background but then I also have here a few feet away from the backdrop so this is even going to help me make sure that any of the lights from whether the edge or the main light is not going to be spilling and hitting the backdrop because I wanted it to fall into absolute darkness now another reason why I also chose to add the edge light is because one she's a dark skin model her hair is black the fur coat that she's wearing is also black and if I had just kept it that way it means that we wouldn't have had any form of separation at all between her and the black backdrop so if you look at her hair for example you can see one side where the edge light was is beautifully illuminated and carved out of the backdrop but then on the other end where we didn't have an edge light you can see that it just blends into the backdrop and in this case it's not really taking away from the shot it's just helping us add a bit of sophistication and depth to the portrait and so it's fine and I'm just using one one. if I was using two edge lights it would have looked artificial and so that is what I wanted to give off in the final image in case you're wondering what I'm capturing this with is my Canon R5 and then the 24 to 70 RF lens 
The reason why I love this lens and I have it on my camera like a 99.9% of the time is that it just gives me a lot of flexibility. I'm able to go wide to 24, zoom into 70 and even shoot in crop mode on the R5 to give me more reach if I need to because that gives me about 18 or 20 megapixel files and that is still fine for social media content that you're creating. So this shoot actually was just experimental, we're just having fun and let me just jump onto my screen right now and then show you all the things I did in post-processing to move it from you know this ordinary studio shoot on a black backdrop and then adding all the little details that we did to enhance or bring this image to life. Right now we're inside Capture One, this is the raw file that has been brought into Capture One and so you're going to see exactly what I did into well I didn't really do much if you think about it if I go and show you a before and after you can see that all I did was just brighten her skin a little bit and also open up the shadows just a little bit the exposure was exactly how I wanted it I also played with her skin color just a tiny bit and so if you look over here you'd see that I played inside the yellows and the oranges just a tiny bit just shifting the colors around until it matched but then there are a few things that I knew I was going to take care of inside Photoshop so for example I did didn't want this reflector to show and I also just didn't want this tube that she was wearing to show as well. I wanted it to just be this fair coat because I felt like it just takes away from the whole vibe of the shot and so just making it a fair coat would have been complete and so I'm going to show you how I did that inside Photoshop. This is going to be the final image that we're going to be looking at how I was able to pull this off. For, for it to look like we're probably just outdoors and then I shot this against you know some rocky backdrop and the and the skies all right. So moving on into Photoshop if I hide everything and start from here, this is the image that I imported into um, Photoshop. And the first thing I did was actually just to crop it to Instagram size. So I use a 4x5 ratio. Most of the time I'm cropping my images to 4x5 because it just fits perfectly for social media. And the next thing I did was to fix her hairline. Now it's a little bit easier to do these things with AI. So I just drew around you know, the area around her hairline and then I just used generative fill to fill in those areas. And then this is what I got. Right, so this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. Now, I also knew that it did leave a little bit of some patchiness, but obviously, if I'm going to take care of patchiness, that's going to be inside frequency separation and dodging and burning. So, the next thing I did was to run my frequency separation action. So, if you don't have my actions, I'm going to leave a link down below. You can check it out, it will help you retouch faster and keep consistent results every single time. And then I went ahead to run my dodging and burning action. And over here, I just did a bit of sculpting and then fixed some of the patchiness uh, or the, the transitions between the lights and shadows, and then just made it a lot smoother smoother right then from there you can see that all I did was just zoom into the image a little bit and then I use a white brush just to outline the hair a little bit now the reason why I did that is because I was just hoping that we can have a little bit more separation so that we can see the definition of her head shape but this is not really supposed to look like what I got with the edge light this is just supposed to add a bit of definition it's you will not really, really see it. And I love doing things like this. I love just, you know, paying attention to certain little, little things and making tiny adjustments that probably no one would see, but I just know that I've done that to enhance the image. And sometimes you just look at the image and be like, there's something about this portrait, but you can't really pinpoint exactly what has been done. And I love to leave some of these hidden notes inside my images. And the next thing I did was to add in the sky, you know, the backdrop and the starry night. And let me just open that for you guys to see what's in there. I noticed that her jacket was a little bit too bright and it wasn't really blending into the pitch black backdrop that we shot her against, right? So all I did was to create a curves adjustment. And you can see over here, I just brought the darkening way, way down. And then just, just helped me paint in the areas that I wanted to darken on this fair coat that she was wearing. So now that we've done that, the next thing I did was to type in a prompt inside generative fill. And what I typed in was evening mountain view. So if I go over here, you'd see that these are the options that it generated for me. If I click on it, it's going to you know change it into that. Um, let me just hide the layer mask briefly and then also change it from pen light to normal. All right, I also desaturated it because I didn't want any color present in the image. And then let me take it to 100%. So this is what, this is one of the generations that it gave me. And this is also another option, which to me did not really fit exactly what I was looking for. But when I saw this, I did see that there was some kind of potential 
for me to be able to use this to get exactly what I wanted. So what I did was to desaturate it to pull out all of the color. Let me just hide that briefly for you to see as well. So this is actually the image that was generated by Photoshop and then I just desaturated it and added a bit of Gaussian blur for it to blend in. The only part that I needed was the skyline up to a little bit of where the mountains are and that is what my layer mask is doing. Over here you'd see that I outlined my subject and then just extracted that portion out of the backdrop so it goes behind here and then if I just reduce the opacity to 82% again and then also change the blending mode from normal to pen light this just allows the necessary portions that I need to show through and already you can see that it's looking like we're standing against that you know that sunset vibe and then it just you know fades into the rest of the skyline and that is beautiful that's just a little bit of a detail that I really really loved that this gave me. I could have generated a few more options but I was happy with this one and so I decided to keep it right here. Now I just went on Google and then typed in a starry night. So over here this is a typical starry night that you would have and I just wanted that to fade or to continue the transition from where the lighting is in the backdrop upwards. I wanted that twinkle in the sky. I wanted those little specular highlights in the sky just to give me a little bit more interest and it just gives the image a little bit of a vibe. So that is all that I did. This is what it gave me. So I reduced the opacity to 64% and then I put that in a group and then I added this fade right here just so it blends in a little bit more. And then I put that in a group as well. And then now I painted the starry night in areas that I wanted it to show in. So that's pretty much how I added in the starry night. And the next thing I did was just to add a bit of a glow in the top left corner, just so you think that that is what is creating that edge light on my subject. I wanted a bit of a glow in that space so that if you see the edge light, it is believable. You will actually think that that is probably what is casting that edge light on my subject. Afterwards, I just did a bit of color balance and you know, try to warm the image up a little bit and then just to move all of the different colors that were not blending to help tell the story together so everything just works in my opinion. Now, I also went into my actions and run my pop action and I reduced the opacity to about 24%. At 100%, this is what it gives. You can see that it just makes the colors really pop. It increases the contrast in the image and the saturation and it's just a beautiful effect that it creates. But in this case, it was a little bit too much so I reduce it to about 24%. So that there is a hint of it, but it's just not dominating as it was. And that's the thing about my actions. They are a little bit enhanced, but then you always have that flexibility of tuning it to fit exactly what you want. The icing on the cake was just for me to add in a little bit of grain so that it just helps tell the story of you know this night portrait that we captured so imagine that you're increasing the iso of your camera i know that the mirrorless cameras nowadays do very well in low light but then this probably can pass for an image that we shot at probably like iso 2000, 6400 or something like that. Just to bring in a bit of organic, you know, noise into the image. I just ran this also from my actions. So my actions actually, actually give you about 24 different, you know, actions that you can run individually at any point in time and they all work hand in hand so yeah do check it out i'm going to leave a link down below as well but yeah this is it for today's video let me know how you feel about it how we started you know from here an image that was playing shot in a studio and on a black backdrop where she almost blended into the backdrop versus how we're able to add a bit of detail into the backdrop, add a starry night, and help tell the story the way we wanted using generative fill and a few board images online. So let me know how you feel about this portrait in the comments down below. And if you haven't subscribed, again, do subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.